What is up, everybody? I'm Aslan Hajavandi, joined by lead writer, senior writer of Warchant.com, Corey Clark. Warchant.com, your ultimate Semmel sports source promo code, bottom of your screen. If you don't want to sign up, I get it, costs money. But hey, you know what doesn't? Hitting the thumbs up button, y'all. Like this video. Send it out to the masses. Corey, there's people out there that love Florida State, have no idea that we even exist, Warchant.com. We got to change that. At some point, you start getting mad at them. Like I, open up your eyes and ears and your senses and know that warchant.com is out there and this this YouTube channel is out there and quit goofing around with other sites or I don't know what you're reading, Street and Smiths. Where are you getting your FSU news from? So yeah, um, yeah. Like, subscribe, and go subscribe to the website. You'll you'll enjoy it, I promise. Yeah. All right. So we thought we we're gonna have maybe a little bit of a slow day on Monday, but jokes on us. Depth chart dropped on Monday afternoon, Corey. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pop it up here on the screen. I'll make it a little bit larger so we can all read it. Uh, quarterbacks, Jordan Travis or Mackenzie Milton. Uh, there's a lot of subterfuge on here, Corey. And uh, quarterback is kind of part of it, I would think. But offensive line is kind of what caught my eye the most when looking at the depth chart, at least on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, I guess, do you want to talk about quarterbacks or is there, do you agree, disagree about offensive line looking a little bit weird possibly? Also note everybody, they've got 12 starters on each side of the ball listed. So I don't know if Brian Kelly signed off on that, but um, take it for what it's worth. Yeah, no, when it comes to the quarterbacks, it's exactly what we thought would happen. There, there's no reason for them to name a starter if they don't have to, and they don't have to clearly. Um, and yeah, there, if there's still any question, you put an or there, and uh, yeah, I just that, that's not surprising at all. Is it? It would have been very, very surprising if somebody had been named the starter um, on Monday, you know, six days before the the Notre Dame game. I think, yeah, I think everything else plays out about how you'd expect. Um, Jakai Douglas listed at running back. Um, he's he's kind of been going back and forth. Um, I think that's kind of interesting. I don't know how much running back he'll play or how much slot receiver he'll play. I would imagine a, a bit of both. Um, you're not surprised by those three receivers. They're the most experienced. You got two redshirt juniors and a redshirt senior. But Malik McLean's going to play. Portier's probably going to play. He's a he's an or with McLean. Um, both freshmen. You know, it's it's crazy the experience they have in those starting three, and then everybody else is uh, freshman, redshirt freshman, 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 redshirt freshman. Uh, no no surprise there at tight end. Jordan Wilson's going to play a lot in certain sets. We all know that. At, tack, at the offensive line, um, Lucas not starting. Um, I wouldn't say it's a surprise necessarily, but it's it's uh, it's interesting. Let's just put it that way. Um, and then you look at that. You know, if that's the offensive line that takes the field against not, Notre Dame, it, well, we, we don't know. But if that's the offensive line that takes the field uh, Sunday against uh, Notre Dame, not, not a bad group. Not no. a bad group. No. With some depth. Because what's interesting to me is – You've got those five starters, and then look at—I know Babion's the the second team at two different positions, but Babion, Dante, and Brady Scott uh, have all played a lot of football, mm -hmm. and so that's a that's a nice uh, you know commodity to have, a luxury to have that you have three backups that have played so much football. So I think that's that's uh, that, that's encouraging as well that you have at least, and I, I think they like Lloyd Willis. Um, so you have you have what, eight, nine guys that you feel semi-comfortable with. And a lot of, and, and many of them have played a lot of football, the guys that aren't even starting. Turning over to the defensive side of things, um, I think maybe one of the, the bigger surprises here is the use of or for Fabian Lovett or Robert Cooper. But again, maybe that goes to me not knowing the, uh, the ins and outs of uh, defensive front football. Uh, but Briggs kind of being a, a lone wolf, alone at top of the D tackle spot, and then Fabian and Robert Orr, and then Kier uh, at Fox, Jermaine Johnson, your, your Russian defensive end. Those guys listed in bold, I like them. I, I, like, I like them a, a good amount, and uh, good to see those guys. Yeah, what happened to your camera, man? Where you, you're like a War Chant uh, logo right now, which is cool. That's fine. Absolutely. But uh, your, your picture disappeared off my screen. It happens hope, all the time, unfortunately. I don't know why. Okay, I hope people aren't tuning out because they can't see you anymore. But, yeah, when, when you look at the bold on the defensive line, I think you feel pretty good about it. I think the, the Dennis Briggs factor is something we've been talking about all camp. He has probably been, at least the interior guys, the most impressive of the bunch, like for long stretches, kind of a, a guy that's really making plays. He's getting in the backfield a lot. He might have taken that next step now where he's a difference maker. 
And, and Fabian Lovett's had a very good camp. Robert Cooper's Robert Cooper, meaning he's a solid, not spectacular, but solid contributing defensive lineman at a high major level. So those five guys in bold, you knew Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas were going to start. That's good. We like that. Mm-hmm. Underneath those guys, Cushney, no idea. Jarrett Jackson, Joshua Farmer. I think they like Farmer. I think Farmer's going to be something, but who knows right now? Uh, Malcolm Ray, who knows? Fuller, McClendon, nobody. I mean, look at that. It's You've got senior, sophomore, sophomore, junior, senior as your five guys that you that you like. And then after that, you got a sophomore that hasn't done a whole lot here, certainly. Freshman, redshirt, freshman, redshirt, freshman, redshirt, freshman. So again, much like the uh, much like the wide receiver group, uh, you like what you have. There's a lot of experience in the starting group, and nothing proven at all behind them. Mm. But that's a, that's not a bad starting, you know, quote unquote five. Yeah, a uh, linebacker, a little bit uh, obviously. <clears throat> lots of eyes focus on that. Amari, Kalen Deloach, DJ Lundy. If they were to be in a three linebacker set, which I don't know they will be, but nonetheless, discuss core. That I mean, Jadarius Green McKnight is the backup at a linebacker spot. That's nuts to me. Um, that's crazy. Uh, but that's that's your linebackers right there. Yeah, so that's that's the one that gives you a little bit of pause, right? Like um Deloach and Lundy have done nothing in their careers. Amari Gaynor still is kind of like that potential guy that we haven't seen at all flash. And then behind Gaynor. By the way, they have 12 starters because it depends on, you know, the offense they're playing. Like, they're not, there's not going to be a lot of defenses where they have three linebackers out there. They're yeah. going to have a nickel sometimes, or they're going to they're gonna have five DBs a lot. But sometimes they'll have four. So I guess they're giving us the, the five DBs and the three linebackers to make, to give us 12. But, uh, you know, Gaynor, Deloach, Lundy, Deloach and Lundy, Lundy especially has really stood out and has had a nice camp. He has not done it in games. He has some experience, but he has not done it in games. But he might be a guy that ends up being a pretty good football player this year. But look behind Gaynor and look behind Deloach. You have two guys that have only been on campus for, I don't know, three, four weeks. Uh, Jadarius Green McKnight was a DB uh, for the first, I don't know, eight to ten days of practice, right, Aslan? Like he was, yeah. And now he's a second-string stud linebacker uh, at a position he's not used to. And then Cortez Andrews, who's a big physical guy, look at that size. Um, he's a transfer uh, from from Maryland that that just got here in the summer. So the one position group that that we're all worried about that we've been worried about for a while that has not really uh, shined. You look at those names right now. Uh, clearly, Emmett Rice isn't available right now. Maybe he'll be back, but that's a lot of inexperience and a lot of nothing proven in in all six of those names, really. Yeah, and then the secondary, which uh, relatively speaking, uh, lots of renowned, heralded prospects, um, and this is what you got. You got uh, Jamie Robinson at your nickelback, which sounds about right. Kevin Knowles, a guy that you've been quite high on backing him up. Yeah. Travis Jay or Jarring at cornerback uh, with Jarvis Brownlee, I guess, holding down your other uh, spot opposite whoever holds that one down, and then Gant and Dent, uh, your safeties. Uh, that that That's a lot. Of, that's surprising to me, I think, to see Gant starting at Buck. Um, and then again, just to see Travis Jay at cornerback to me still looks a little bit weird. Thought that he would be a safety, but uh, they put him at cornerback. He says he's comfortable at cornerback. Let's roll him out at cornerback. Yeah, I mean, it, hey, at the very least, you like the size, right? 6'2", yeah. 200 for a corner. Uh, that's good. I think Knowles is going to play. Shaheen Brown, like we said, he's been making plays every day in practice, but he is a true freshman. So we didn't expect him to be a starter uh, going in against Notre Dame. You look again, you know, Brownlee, Dent, Gant, Jay, Jones, Robinson. Those are dudes that have played. They're they're all sophomores or below, which is interesting because they've all played a lot of football. Um, and I do think you look at the depth with, with Williams' has played, Renardo Green has made plays, uh, McClellan, I think that's how you pronounce his name, the kid from Arkansas. You've got guys that can play, and you've got guys that you feel good about. But you know, you look at that defense, you look at that secondary. Jamie Robinson just got here. Travis Jay's playing a position he's, he hadn't played. Gant, Dent has played a position he hasn't played, he didn't play last year. And then Brownlee at corner. And I look at Dotson. Like Dotson's a guy that's going to play too. So all those guys, that's quality depth because all those guys, save for who? Shaheen Brown and Knowles, the two true freshmen. All those guys have played a, a pretty good amount of football um, yeah. at Florida State or elsewhere. So, it's an experienced group, even though it's not a very old group. I don't know. That Bucks position is a little bit worrisome. Yes. I mean, Williams yeah. got some burn last year, but not a whole lot. But again, I 
I think a lot of that stuff's interchangeable, man. I think they can they can piece some stuff for, and move some guys around. And then wrapping up, uh, you've worried about special teams. Ryan Fitzgerald, uh, there you go. You see it right there. He has won the the kicking job, so he'll be your place kicker. Master Mana, who's had a great uh, preseason, your punter. And then your kick returns, you got Jay and Douglas, maybe Ren and Douglas. I think they'd like Ren to, to take – I think Ren's probably the most athletically gifted guy they have back there, but – Travis Jay is more consistent, so they're going to roll with him at least week one. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Ren make an impact um, as the season moves on. But there you go for specialists and returners. We are coming down to the wire on that long snapper battle. Oh, yeah. Rosenberry and Murray, man, it's time now. You got a week left. You got to figure out which one of you guys is going to be, um, you know, do you go with the bigger guy by four pounds? I don't know. They're both redshirt sophomores. Uh, yeah, so the kicking battle, yeah, yeah, that was uh, – Fitzgerald's been good this camp. Um, from what we can tell, and again, a freshman. I, I think you know, Travis J is starting cornerback. That's your your primary punt returner. We've seen that around here forever, from Dion to Buckley to to Corey Sawyer, Greg Reed. But a, a, a starting cornerback that's also a kick returner. We haven't seen that a ton. And like you said, I, I don't know that I'd say Ren is the most athletic. He's the fastest. But Travis J is plenty fast and has some wiggle and some size to him. That you know, he's about the size that Vanover was, and Vanover is one of the better kick returners they've ever had at this school. So, I'm, I'm interested in that what that looks like. Um, so Ja'Kai Douglas will definitely be one apparently on kick returns, and then Jay or Wren, maybe depending on how tired Jay is from being on the field, uh, playing defense. Um, but yeah, those are those are the those are the names we thought, right? There's no nothing in there that's really a surprise. No. All right, right now, Jeff Cameron show is going on 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, we will be doing a podcast for you in the morning. But before then, 6 p.m., Devontae Love Taylor Trench Talk live here on YouTube. Subscribe, hit the like button, do all that drills. Uh, go to warchant.com, more breakdown of the depth chart. As we're here, everybody, it's game week. Uh, Greg Jones days away, y'all. Can't wait. Corey, thanks for your time, your knowledge, though, even more so. You got it, buddy.